Thank you so much. Um, first of all, uh, the Congress of the United States, this committee, and the Congress gave the President the authority to use prosecutorial discretion. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a letter uh, signed by Republicans and Democrats. I think it was 1999. Uh, one of the signatures to the letter is uh, uh, the former chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Lamar Smith, when uh, he suggested to then President, uh, the presidential administration of uh, Clinton that they might use prosecutorial discretion more frequently. Um, uh, so there were <coughs> one, two, three former general counsels to the INS who each signed a letter indicating uh, that the president had this authority under law. And these are the general counsels of the, and here is the letter. It's uh, November 4th, 1999 to then Janet Reno, guidelines for use of prosecutorial discretion in removal proceedings, uh, and it was to the Attorney General, and it was signed by Henry Hyde, Lamar Smith, Bill M well, and it says use it. So I think it's pretty well established that the Congress of the United States has given this authority to the President of the United States, and he used it. Now, I also want to go back to a very important point that I think Mr. Gowdy made about doing it on a case-by-case -case basis. It is on a case-by-case -case basis. Each and every case has to be judged individually. Uh, many people think that the prosecutorial discretion that under uh, DACA, on the removal of use, that all they have to do is show up and say, I arrived here before I was 16. No, there are very stringent rules and regulations and matters of proof that they were here before they were 16. The first thing they get back in the mail is a letter saying, come on down, and share with us your fingerprints so that we can make sure that you're not a criminal. And so what is prosecutorial discretion? It's saying that in the case of youth, it's saying that, let me see, we can go after the uh, head of the soccer team at the local high school, or we can go after the gangbanger. We can go after the class valedictorian, or we can go after the rapist. We can go after the debate team uh, head of the debate team at the local college, or we can go after a criminal element. The fact is that we have limited resources, and what prosecutorial discretion allows us to do is to go after bad people while leaving good people along as they're caught up in the morass of our broken immigration system. And I think most people will agree that as you look at the youth, they're Americans and everything but a piece of paper. They like the same music our kids like. They dance the same dances our kids dance. They go to the same school. They say, you know something? I wish we would all go to a classroom and watch them day in and day out put their hands over their heart and pledge allegiance to the same flag that each and every one of us pledges allegiance to every day before we start a session of the Congress of the United States. All we're trying to do is have the paperwork catch up to who they really are. They're really American in everything but that piece of paper. They came here as children. This is the only country they know. And you want to know something? This is the country they love. And so part of the law is justice, right? Part of the law is justice. It's making sure that it's fair. And I think that's part of prosecutorial discretion. And that's what the, and please, to say that the President of the United States just made this up and that he did it and somehow uh, he made this up so that he could follow some, some, some new political... Are you kidding? Chairman Gowdy, I got to tell you, I was there in the room with him and he said he wouldn't use it for the dreamers. He said he wouldn't use it for uh, uh, undocumented immigrants who had American citizen children. He told us no. I still remember when Senator Bob Menendez said to the President of the United States right there in the dining room at the White House that he would defend any action taken by the Congress of the United States to take away his prosecutorial discussion if he used it. He used it because a community of people demanded that he be fairer because the deportations were so ruthlessly dividing our families and crippling our ability to just breathe free in our neighborhoods. So I just want to say, Look at who they are. I, I want to tell you, come on down to the 4th Congressional District Office over 3400 West North Avenue and come and meet Jose Quintero. 
He's going to go to architectural school. I hired him as soon as he got his documents. Come and meet Nancy. She's 24 years old. She's filling out more and more form. She loves this country. You should see those two youngsters. They love it. And I'm happy I hired them. Because you want to know something? It sets an example for others. And to end, I want to say to Chairman Gowdy, sometimes we don't focus on what we're saying to one another. I heard you very clearly. I look forward to the moment when you and I can work on advancing citizenship for young people in this country. And I want to thank you for having made that statement as, as, as part, of, your, uh, as part of, uh, of what you have stated here today. I look forward to the day we, 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 we work on that. Thank you so much, because that, again, um, I have to tell you, lifts my heart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman from Illinois.